last November, the Vanderbilt Commodores, led by Jay Cutler, came to Knoxville and defeated the Tennessee Volunteers for the first time in 22 seasons. The win was a big one for Vanderbilt. It was their bowl game. But that win by Vandy left a bad taste in the Volunteers' mouth. Tennessee is 7-3, but they've lost two in a row. They're going to a bowl game. But which bowl game they go to depends on how they do today against Vanderbilt and against Kentucky next week. Today, it's Tennessee and Vanderbilt next on CSS. Stadium Dudley Field in Nashville, Tennessee. This afternoon, the Vanderbilt Commodores will be hosting the Tennessee Volunteers. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Nashville. I'm Randy Smith along with Pat Ryan. Vanderbilt did it last year, but that's one game. This is a whole new season, and Tennessee certainly would like to do something about that. Yeah, they would. They're 7-3, and three, and they need to win the next two ball games to solidify their bowl position starting today with Vanderbilt. We've got two of the great receivers in college football in this game. Robert Meacham, of course, for Tennessee, as third nationally in rushing in the pass receiving yards. Yeah, it started with the first game. He caught a little five-yard hitch and went to distance against California. He's been Eric Ainge's favorite target all season long. The most impressive thing about Robert Beach in this year is not his catches, his yards, but his yards per catch, almost 20 yards per catch for your number one receiver. That's outstanding. Robert Meacham has some folks on the team with him that can catch the ball as well, but this is a banged-up Tennessee football team. Well, everybody's banged up. The receivers are banged up. Uh, you know, we've got linemen banged up. Defense is banged up. You, know, you go through a long season, you have those bumps and bruises, you got to fight through it. We said last year's Vanderbilt win over Tennessee was a bowl game for Vandy. It's probably the same situation. Their season ends today, and, of course, they have a great receiver of their own in Earl Bennett. Yeah, Earl Bennett, Tennessee fans will not forget this guy. He caught 14 passes last year in the Vanderbilt win in Knoxville. The deciding touchdown catch in the last minute. This guy has got 78 receptions this year to go piggyback on top of 79 last year. Makes him the most prolific sophomore wide receiver in the SEC. Tennessee and Vanderbilt. It'll be coming up next here in Nashville as the Vanderbilt Commodores end their season and Tennessee looks to extend theirs. Hopefully a little bit better bowl game with a win today over the Commodores. Stay with us. We'll be back with more from Nashville in just a moment. We are set to kick it off. Vanderbilt has won the opening coin toss of the game. The Commodores elected to defer, so they'll kick, and Tennessee will receive. Tennessee leads at 67, 27 wins for Vanderbilt, five ties, but Vandy won the last time they played, 28-24, last year in Knoxville. Brian Han Hanfeld will kick it off as you look at Coach Philip Fulmer, 135 and 40 in his 15 seasons at Tennessee. Yancey and Marcellus Johnson will be back deep to receive for the Volunteers. Coach Bobby Johnson in his fifth year. Record's not that good, but nobody's is at Vanderbilt. He's done as well as everybody. Low kick, bobble, picked up by Yancey. Yancey crosses the 25 out to the 28. And that's where Tennessee will put it in play. First down and 10 at the volunteer 28-yard line. Here are your starting lineups for Tennessee. The offensive line, Sears, Ligon, McNeil, Parker, and Young. They pretty much started the entire year. Backs and receivers, Brad Connum getting the start at tight end. Chris Brown will also play. Swain Meacham and Monterio Hardesty is the tailback. And Eric Ainge opens at quarterback. He set out the last two. Hardesty bounces off one man. Runs into his own man, crosses the 35, gets good yardage. And he got it, Pat Ryan, on good second effort. Yeah, good second effort. Got hit at the line of scrimmage. Took a pretty good shot. Looked like he was going down. Wasn't having any of it. Bounced off. Picked up five more yards. Vanderbilt starters, the linebackers, Joyce, Goff, back there along with Allen, Rashard Lankford, Ryan Hamilton, and Joel Caldwell in the second end. 
A gain of about six and a half. It'll be second down and three. Play action. Hands. Quick slip screen. First down. This is Meacham. Out of bounds inside the Vanderbilt 45. Robert Meacham with a reception. Ryan Hamilton pushes him out of bounds and a big gain for the Volunteers. Yeah, just a really nice slip screen to the left to Meacham. Good quick play action and Ains fires it out left to Meacham. He's got a good block by his tackle. Aaron Sears flying out there on the quarterback, opening up that sideline to Meacham. Meacham picks up 21 on the pass from Eric Ains. First down at the Vanderbilt 43 yard line. Two receivers stacked up to the right, one left. Ames, quick slip screen, swing. Good yardage, breaks away inside the 35, has a very, very close to another Tennessee first down. Kevin Joyce makes the tackle, but not before Jason Swain with good second effort, spins away and makes good yardage. Yeah, Tennessee came with a the spread offense, and Vandy counters with their nickel defense. What they do, they throw another slip screen out to the right. Hardesty does a good job coming out, running interference, giving Swain a chance to get up close to the first down yardage. Pickup of nine, second and one. Ains, Hardesty, first down, straight ahead, right up the middle, gain of about three. Theo Horrocks makes the tackle on Hardesty. He picks up Tennessee's second first down. Thirteen minutes, twelve seconds to go in the first quarter. We're just underway, and Tennessee is driving. Volunteer drive started at the Tennessee 28. They're now at the Vanderbilt 33, and it's a first down. Ainge and sweep right side. This is hardest. Not much there. Out of bounds. Just shy of the 30 yard line. Jared Fagan knocked him out. He picked up about two, but that was it for Hardesty. Well, Tennessee's trying to run the counter back this way with Chris Brown coming down the lead block. He slips, falls down, you lose your lead blocker, you lose yards. Tennessee games two, despite the fact Chris Brown fell down. Second down and eight for the Volunteers at the Vanderbilt 30. Two receivers right, three left. In the backfield by himself is Ames. Throws it to the right, caught inside the 30. That's Lucas Taylor with the reception at the 26-yard line. And Tennessee will be faced with a third and short upcoming. Yeah, Eric Ainge would like to have that one back. He got the extra corner blitz off the left side, so he decided to come to the right and hit the short pass. But he had Meacham in behind on a slant pattern that if he sees him, uh, that could have been six points. Third down and about four for the Volunteers at the Vanderbilt 26. LaMarcus Coker in a tailback along with Ainge. Two receivers left, one right for Tennessee. Ains out of the shotgun. Plenty of time, throws it incomplete. Intending for Meacham. Ryan Hamilton was defending, and that pass was there, but so was Hamilton. It'll be fourth down. Yeah, it was there, and, and the hit came a little bit early. I'm really surprised not to see a little flag come out of the official's pocket. You see there, Hamilton makes contact before the football gets there, but had good, good position, good coverage. He wasn't open anyway. This will be a 43-yard attempt by James Willow. 43-yard field goal. Holding is Casey Wood. James Wilhoy. Right down the middle. Kick is away. It is long enough, and it is good. So Wilhoy gets Tennessee the lead, three to nothing. And we're at the 11:56 mark of the first quarter. Tennessee drives from the 28. They're stopped at the 31, and Wilhoy boots it through. Timeout. We'll be back in Nashville in a moment. It's Tennessee 3, Vanderbilt nothing. Tennessee takes a 3 nothing lead on a 43-yard field goal by James Wilhoy. Tennessee kicks it off. Vanderbilt watches this one go through the uprights. That, my friends, would have been a 65-yard field goal. I think you got to give you at least a point for that. Yeah, I think so. He hit that one a lot better than he did the 43-yard a moment sure ago. Tennessee scoring drive, 45 yards, eight plays, took a little over three minutes. It'll be first and ten, Vanderbilt. 
And Will Hoyt also had a little help from the wind on that one, too. You know, it looked like the wind was fighting his field goal. Yeah. I, I don't think he really hit it solid. He definitely hit that kickoff solid. Vanderbilt comes to the line, trailing 3 nothing, And Chris Nixon opens at quarterback. Hassan Jackson Garrison is the standing tight end, uh, standing, uh, standing tailback. They give it on a sweep. Tennessee hits him at the line and drops him. He may have picked up a foot. Marvin Mitchell and Robert Ayers, horse collar. Vanderbilt on that play. And it was Earl Bennett, the receiver, who will be a starting at one of the wide spots, along with the offensive lineman for Vandy. And there you see the backs and receivers, Jackson Garrison, Allen Smith, Marlon White, and, of course, Earl Bennett. Chris Nixon, 6'1", 210, a sophomore, had a big, big day passing the football last week in the loss to Kentucky. Bennett caught 11 passes for 220 yards. Second down, pass intercepted. Tennessee had the ball and dropped it. Ryan Carl, or was it Antonio Gaines? Ricardo Kemp in the secondary, number 23, getting a start today for Tennessee's defensive secondary. Almost had his first career pick. They tried to get that to Marlon White quick, dropped in a nice zone coverage, and almost had the pick. Mitchell, McBride starting up front along with McLaughlin and Reynolds. Carl, Mitchell, and Mayo, the linebackers in the secondary. Stewart, Morley, Hefney, and Antonio Gaines, and Jonathan Wade also back there for Tennessee. Third and long. Vanderbilt's lucky Tennessee didn't get the interception. Nixon, mobile quarterback going down, got the pass away. Tennessee's got him inside the 20. Earl Bennett was the receiver, but Wade and Mayo were there to knock him down along with Demetrius Morley, and Tennessee's defense looks very quick, very fresh. Yeah, very, very fresh on that play. They've had a hard time getting off the field on third down. They look good there. They had good pressure on Nixon. Started to take him down. He got the ball out to Bennett, but Bennett had three guys around him. Didn't have a chance. Brent Upson will stand at his five and punt it for Vanderbilt. Hepney stands inside his 45 to receive for Tennessee. Upson gets it away, a high spiral. Hefney catches it at the 38. Got a block, spins away, gets away, picks up about three yards, that's it. But it'll be good field position for Tennessee following the 42-yard punt by Upson. You know, I think you're going to see Tennessee run the football a little more on this series. Last series, they ran it once or twice, but they went to the went to the slip screens mostly and then threw the football. Had good success running. I think we'll see more with this series. Sports Night crew hits the hardwood to preview the Alabama men's basketball squad. It'll be Tuesday at 6 and 11 here on Sports Night. Hardesty in a tailback again for Tennessee. Ainge at quarterback. Play action. Ainge going deep down the sideline. Had a man, but the pass was overthrown by about five yards. Brett Smith, the intended receiver. Well, there's another one Eric would like to have back. Good play action. Fake just really held the Vanderbilt defense. He had Brad caught him straight down the middle of the field for six points. Dutton Thornton elects to come back to the sideline to meet him and overthrew the football. Brett Smith was, Brett defended, Smith. Yes, was defended by Ryan Hamilton. Free safety for Vanderbilt. Second down, Tennessee at the 43. Ames gives it to the tailback. Hardesty, not much there, to the 35, maybe the 36. And it will be third down upcoming for Tennessee. Montario Hardesty picks up two, maybe three. And Marcus Bugs from his strong linebacker spot makes the tackle for the Commodores. And Bugs did a good job of crashing out. You know, reading, the, reading the play and coming off the edge and, and getting before he get up for it. Third down, seven for Tennessee. about third and six and a half. Ames out of the shotgun. Great protection over the middle. Caught by Meacham at the 40. First down, Volunteers. Meacham inside the 40. Ryan Hamilton made the tackle for Vanderbilt. Yeah, good protection on that play. Gave Ames time to sit in the pocket and let Meacham come across the middle of the field. That's what's open against that double zone is the middle of the field. You've got to have time to throw that football over. They mark the football inside the 40 after a 16-yard pickup on third down for the Volunteers. 
And it's first and ten Tennessee. There you see the season numbers for Robert Meacham. Even breather. Vanderbilt blitz picked up beautifully by Hardesty, and Ainge is going to run it out of bounds Eric inside Ainge the 40. The no gain. Maybe a yard. Hardesty had a great block on, on the linebacker the that was coming in to blitz Eric Gaines. Hardesty did a good Tennessee job picking it up. And Eric bails out right. He's only got one receiver out there. He wasn't open, you know. I believe if I was Eric and that had that to do over again, I'd just thrown that ball out of bounds instead of taking a chance running on that bum ankle all the way to the sideline. Two receivers come left. That's Brett Smith and Cottom in the slot line. Haynes back to throw. Caught. Brett Smith inside the 30, very close to a first down. Picked up nine. That's about what he needed. Jonathan Goff and Marcus Bucks make the tackle, but let's see where they mark the football. I believe that's going to be a first down. Nice throw to the outside by Eric. He got good pressure from Chris Booker. Straight up the middle, took a shot when he threw the football. Got it out there quick. He had the chance to get it upfield to get to the stick. Haynes now five of seven, 58 yards. 7.58, under eight minutes to go in the first quarter. Tennessee driving, first down. Hardesty turns the corner. Hardesty inside the 20. Hardesty, first down, volunteers inside the 15. Jared Fagan knocks him out of bounds as Hardesty showed his great speed once he turned that corner. Well, that's that counter play we talked about. To the other side, Chris Brown starts on the right, moves to the left, gets a good block to spring Hardesty, giving room on that sideline. First down at the Vanderbilt, 16. Tennessee leading it 3 nothing. And Coker's in a tailback for Tennessee. Five first downs already in the game. The draw play, Coker inside the 15 to about the 13. Brandon Bryant makes the tackle after a three-yard pickup by Coker. I'll tell you what, Chris Brown has come to play today. He, he got a really good lead block that time. Took out the linebacker, give the running back a chance to get up in there. He just the defense had help. But Second down, they mark the football just inside the Vanderbilt 13 yard line. Coker straight ahead to the 11. And it will be third down and long for Vanderbilt. Dave Hall makes the tackle. And for, for Tennessee, it will be third and long. And just a trap play using Chris Brown as a blocker again. Got up, got a few yards. This is an important down for Tennessee. They, they don't need to settle for three points here. They're inside the 20 yard line, third down. They need to convert this or get a touchdown on this play. The 11th play, the ninth play of the drive coming up for Tennessee. It's third down and about six. Ames, pass, caught by Cotton to the 10. He's way shy of the first down. May have picked up a yard. That's all. And it will be fourth down. Well, see, that's good defense by Vander, but they know that. When they bring the extra corner blitz, what our side just saw, and that's going to be the quick pass to the tight end to the outside. They feel like they can stop him short of the third down marker, so they're going to bring that blitz every time until we go to somebody else. So for the second time, Tennessee is stalled inside Vanderbilt territory. This, my friends, will be a 28-yard field goal attempt by Will Hoyt, who made one earlier from 43. in the air and it is perfect. Six nothing Tennessee 540 to go in the first quarter on a pair of James Wilhoyt field goals. Tennessee's eaten up the yardage but scoring few points thus far. 540 to go. We'll take a timeout here in Nashville. It's Tennessee six Vanderbilt nothing. We'll be back right after this. Six nothing Tennessee leads late in the first quarter. Will Hoyt kicks it again. This time a shorter kick. It still goes four yards deep in the end zone, and Josh Allen takes a knee. And Vanderbilt brings it out to the 20-yard line. 
So Willoyd has put two kickoffs in the end zone. Ten plays, 48 yards. Four, hundred, uh, four minutes and 15 seconds. And the 27-yard field goal by Willoyd makes it 6-0 Tennessee. Vanderbilt puts it in play. Coach Bobby Johnson's team still looking for first down number one. This is just their second possession. Tennessee has dominated the clock in the first quarter and has a 6-0 lead. Nixon, plenty of time over the middle. Caught. First down, Vanderbilt still on his feet. That's George Smith down the sideline and out of bounds in Tennessee territory. Demetrius Morley pushed him out. But that time, Vanderbilt got a receiver open into the open field, and that picked up big yard. Well, George Smith comes off the slot, just comes across in the middle of the field, gets away from the coverage. Nixon hits him quick with it, gives him a chance to run. He puts on a couple nifty moves to get down the sideline. 6'3", 195, a sophomore. George Smith showed some great speed right there. First down, Vanderbilt at the Tennessee 49. Jackson Garrison, the tailback, straight ahead. He gets down to the Tennessee 46. That's a pickup of three, maybe four yards. Xavier Mitchell and Demetrius Morley make the tackle for the Volunteers. You know, you know, and that's what Jackson Garrison gives them. I mean, he's not a phenomenal back, but he is very serviceable. He's going to hit you for three, four yards a clip. You know, he's averaging about four yards a carry. And if they can get three and four yards on first down, they're going to be happy with him. Coach John Chavis with a concerned look on his face. Second and seven. Jackson hit in the backfield and dropped by Marvin Mitchell. Mitchell sacks Jackson Garrison for a loss of about three yards. Well, five yards. So we got the three back that he gained there. Tried to run a little inside option play to Garrison. Mitchell snuffed that out, saw it all the way, and got it for the three yard loss. So now it's third and long for Vanderbilt. Nose of that football resting right at midfield. As you look at the numbers for Marvin Mitchell. Nixon with a slot to the left, slot to the right, three receivers to the right side. Vanderbilt sending everybody out on third and 11. Nixon over the middle, pass dropped, intended for number 82. That's Marlon White. And White had that one and probably had some running room had he caught it, but he dropped it. Well, that's the same pass essentially that, that Tennessee hit Meacham with earlier. It's a crossing pattern in the double zone area. That's where it's going to be open. Pass a little wide, but, uh, you know, good wide receiver. You've got to bring that in because that had first down yards all over it. Hefney stands at the 10 to receive the punt from Brent Upson. He stands at his 35 to punt it away for the Commodores. High wobbly kick. They're going to let it bounce, and it is down inside the 15. So a pretty good bounce for Vanderbilt. And Tennessee has its worst starting position of the day. It's inside the Van, uh, Tennessee 15 yard line. Timeout, 3.33 to go in the first quarter. Tennessee leading Vanderbilt, 6 to nothing here in Nashville. We'll be back right after this. Tennessee with a 6 nothing lead. They've scored on each of their first two possessions. And Eric Ames is 6 of 8 for 59 yards. Tennessee has also inserted its third different tailback of this quarter. Arian Foster is in. Ains with a play action. Pass is high but caught by Meacham. Meacham has the first down, I think. He picked up about 10. That's what he needed. Boy, Eric Ains is throwing the ball pretty well, Pat. But, you know, it looked scary about, what, three weeks ago, maybe uh, four at South Carolina? Yeah, it really did. If you see here, he hits a quick pass. Uh, the Swain on the slip screen. Here's one across the middle to Meacham. He just hits Meacham again. There's another one to Brett Smith. He's, I mean, he's an equal opportunity employer. He's hitting everybody, but a few weeks ago, took a bad shot on that ankle, and uh, consequently, he didn't get to play much the last couple of weeks. First down. Line of scrimmage shy of the 25. They give it to Foster. Tiptoes out of trouble and out of bounds. He loses, loses a yard, I think, and Chris Booker and Ray Brown knocked him out for Vanderbilt. You know, this is a play that looked like it had some promise. Had two, two people pulling out in front of Foster. 
and he just doesn't follow his blockers. He, he puts a move on and he takes it outside when he had the only thing he had was inside. That's where you got to go. Second and 11 after the loss by Foster. Just over two and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Tennessee leading 6 0. Ames, quick three strip. Uh, drop to Swain, complete past the 33 yard line. Short of a first down, but good yardage for Jason Swain. Joel Caldwell knocked him down for Vanderbilt. Well, this is, this is a formation that Tennessee is liking more and more as time goes on. And that is two tight ends, two wide receivers, and one running back. You really balance up defenses that way. You can go either way, and you usually get somebody open, wide open outside, man to man. And that's what happened right there on the pass to Swain. Third down and about a yard and a half. And Gives it, fakes to Foster, dumps the pass away. Vanderbilt had it covered. Pass was complete to David Holbert, but no game. Kevin Joyce was there, and Tennessee on fourth and one will have to punt the ball away. A strange play there because you, you got the play action pass, and essentially, unless somebody fell down, we've got one receiver on the play, and that's Holbert, and he's running along the line of scrimmage. You cover him. You don't have anything because you got Ainge. He's not going to run for the first down. Consequently, Tennessee's lining up. Colbert's going to have to punt it away. Britton Colbert on the punt for the first time today. He was on a bunch last week in Arkansas. Low snap. He gets it. And booms a Wow. Drive. Spiral. All the way back to the 10. It's fumbled, and he is blasted down by the Volunteers at the 5 yard. What a hit. Let's take a look at it again. Well, Loss of two after the punt. Yeah, what a punt. I'd like to be able to throw one like that. Fumbled the kick and just got hammered by. Who is that? DeCorey Williams. DeCorey Williams put the hit on. Vanderbilt's backed up at the eight yard line. Tremendous punt that time by Coldwood, and it does not look to be very windy that direction. Man, he just really boomed that. First down, Vanderbilt. At the Commodore eight-yard line. Nixon keeps it himself, runs up the middle. It's a block, cuts back to the middle to the 15, gets good yardage. Jerron Mayo makes the tackle for Tennessee. Well, Tennessee lines up. Well, Vanderbilt lines up in a spread offense. They had everybody out. That spreads Tennessee's offense out. And if you get a little gap, that's what's going to happen with Nixon. He likes to run the football. Gone for over 600 yards this year. He is their leading rusher. So if he finds a little slip, he's going to go for it. Second down seven after a seven yard pickup. Nixon hands it to Jackson Garrison. Slips away from one man. A flag goes down as he moves forward for a first down but I would imagine it is a hold against Vanderbilt and it is. Anytime that flag comes down uh, from behind in that offensive line there that's you can almost count 95 percent of the time it's going to be holding. He had the first down but Tennessee obviously will accept the penalty and he'll move them back half the distance. Fifty three on the offense. Half the distance to the goal. We we'll have one untimed down. That is an untimed down offensive penalty, which means the quarter ran out when the penalty but you can't end a period on a so does that penalty. Does so that mean we're gonna have one more play and yeah. then we're gonna go by rule we cannot end the quarter right. on an accepted penalty. There will be one untimed down. I should have waited for him to explain it. <laughs> well, I was trying to explain it. You know, I'm just here. What can I say? <laughs> well, I'm glad you're here. So after the penalty, it'll be second down and 11 after the step off half the distance. That nullified the first down run by Jackson Garrison. 
Nixon into motion, fakes to Bennett, keeps it himself up the middle, good yardage, and he gets very, very close to the first down. Antoine Stewart and Xavier Mitchell knock him down, and that will end the first quarter. Tennessee leads Vanderbilt six to nothing here at the end of the first quarter in Nashville. Stay with us on a beautiful day at Vanderbilt Stadium. We'll be back. Well, Nixon picked up about 10 yards, but he, after the mark off of that penalty, he's still about six inches short. So it'll be third and that much to go for Vanderbilt. Big, big edge in total yardage for Tennessee in the first quarter. However, they have only a 6 nothing lead, and Vanderbilt is one touchdown strike away from going ahead or tying the game. And he's 0 for 2 on third downs. Nixon straight ahead. I believe he got what he needed, but that was about it. Really didn't look like he was that fired up about running that sneak, to be honest with you. He just took that snap and just kind of laid forward. But I, I, as you said, Randy, I believe it was laid enough for the first down yardage. Uh, the way they marked it there, we may have to may have to measure it again. They're going to met. Nah, they're going to give it to him. First down, Vanderbilt. See, that's not. I mean, that's not really punching it in there. I mean, <laughs> it's not. He, he needed six inches. He got seven. I that guess was about he, it. I guess he figures he takes enough shots during the game that uh, he wasn't going to create one more. First down, Vanderbilt. Line of scrimmage at the Commodore 18 yard line. Long count. Nixon fakes, falls down, and he's down right there. I don't think it would have mattered because coming hard from the left side was Gerard Mayo. He just was a little too quick there. I was down on that turf before the game, and it, it is a little slick. It's uh, It looks good from up here, but you get down, there's some, there's some patchy spots on it, and you'll see guys slipping quite a bit off and on all day. Second down after the loss of about five. The second down at 15. Two receivers to the left side, one right, and Jackson Garrison is the tailback. Nixon keeps it. Tennessee's waiting for him at the line. They got it. Jonathan Hefney from his safety position came up and made the tackle, and it's look, it looks like he was keying on him. He wasn't going anywhere. Yeah, I think he was spying. I think that was Hefney's job because they brought uh, Nickelback, uh, Ricardo Kemp on the blitz. They brought Marvin Mitchell on the blitz. They got caved to the left side. The only guy there to make that play is Hefney, and he never took his eyes off the quarterback. Back-to-back -back college football replays Tuesday on CSS. Auburn and Alabama at 7, and Duke and Georgia Tech at 9. Third and 15. Nixon coming hard. They throw it deep. It is caught. My goodness. Right in between two Tennessee defenders at the 34. It is a Vanderbilt first down. How in the world first did he ever get the pass off? Secondly, how in the world did he ever catch it? Well, that was that was good pressure. He just barely got that football off. What he does is he trusts his receiver. He trusts Bennett to make the play. He just throws it at his back. He's very well covered by Kemp, but he throws it at the receiver's back. The defender just runs by, and Bennett just stops and catches the ball. First down, Vanderbilt. Out near the Tennessee 35. They mark it just past the 34. Nixon. Over the middle, caught by Jackson Garrison. Good yardage. He's still on his feet down to the Tennessee 40 yard line. Antoine Stewart drags him down, but not before he gets a first down for Vanderbilt. Yeah, that's a good play by Vanderbilt. He's got Jackson Garrison who, who fakes a block. He just bumps, and it's essentially just a halfback delay over the middle. Tennessee clears out. He dumps it to Jackson Garrison. He's got a lot of a lot of clean room ahead of him, and he takes it up for the big game. 26-yard pickup. Nixon rolling left, throws it away, way over the head of the intended receiver George Smith. It'll be second down upcoming. It looked like he was just trying to beat Ryan Carl out there with the ball. He really could have hung on to that a little second longer, but Carl was trying to get into the throwing lane. Nixon hurt it a little bit and just threw it out of bounds. Second down at the Tennessee 40 for Vanderbilt. Tennessee leading at six to nothing. Bobby Johnson coaching at Furman before he was hired here at Vanderbilt.
Faking to Hawkins. Hits him by the block. Slips outside, runs it there, and it is. He's going to get the first down, I think, from where they marked it. Vanderbilt's coaches may be arguing, but he may have enough anyway. Yeah, if he gets past that uh, he's got the 30-yard line, he's got it, I believe. Uh, Enrico yeah, McCoy comes off the corner, and he, he just doesn't keep his outside position and just lets Nixon just go right around him. And, and once McCoy vacates that area, there's nobody out there to make that tackle. Vanderbilt's moving. It started inside the 20. It's now to the Tennessee 30-yard line. First down, Vanderbilt. The mobile quarterbacks have given Tennessee, they have given everybody trouble all year long, and, and Nix has given them fits in this drive. Nixon, two receivers left, one right. Play action, coming hard, Tennessee after him, and it is picked off right into the hands of Tennessee at the 10. Penalty marker goes down, but still on his feet, swung out of bounds at the 45 is Jonathan Hefty. And now let's see what the flag is about. Well, the flag came about 10 hours late. I think they're going to call interference. I believe it was Marlon White slipped and went down. I think they're going to call contact in the secondary but that flag came in long long after the, uh, the interception happened they were halfway down the field before the back judge ever threw his flag well they're still discussing it that's about the only thing I could think coming those flags coming from that area of the field well they got two of them so obviously two guys saw something before the interception number four on the defense on an eligible receiver doing a legal pass. Two yards from the previous spot. An automatic first down. Well, he explained it. Jonathan Wade holding before the pass was thrown. So that puts Vanderbilt with another first down deeper into Tennessee territory. Here's a look. Yeah, you can't really see it. Uh, from that look, it just appeared that the receiver White slipped and went to the ground, and, and Hefty was there for the gift. Well, they mark it at the 20. A penalty of 50, uh, 10 yards. So it'll be first down Vanderbilt at the Tennessee 20. Two receivers left, three to the right for Vanderbilt. And a whistle. And now they're going to start playing. I have no idea what that was. About. Tennessee's going to have to get some pressure on Nixon. With all these wide receivers running around the field, you can't let him sit back there and pick and choose because somebody's going to get open. Tennessee coming hard. He gets the pass inside the 20. Caught by Vanderbilt. Marlon White, the receiver. Ryan Carl makes the tackle for Tennessee. Just a quick stop on the outside. White he goes down five yards, sits in the middle of his zone. Nixon comes off to him. Tennessee, they'll see that a couple times, and then what's going to happen? They're going to run somebody in behind him, and you're going to go to the short guy, and he's going to get the play in behind you. Pick up of six, second and four. The 11th play of this drive coming up for Vanderbilt. Nixon inside. Jackson Garrison to the 10. Very close to another first down. He needed six. I think he's short. It will be third down. Devontae Bolden makes the tackle on Jackson Garrison, who is a good looking youngster. Oh, Jackson Garrison? Yes, he's a he's a good running back out of Central High School. I saw him play a lot in high school. He's a phenomenal player. He came over here and a lot of people thought he was gonna end up being a fullback over here, but over the last year he turned out to be uh, their feature back. Third down, Nixon has the first down as he gets it inside the 10. That time a little more push from Chris Nixon. He acted like he wanted that one a little bit more and didn't get a lot, but just enough, I believe, for the first down. First down, Vanderbilt, right at the 10. Still, I don't think they gave him a really good mark. I actually thought he made it on down to the nine. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. Vanderbilt three out of five in third down conversions. We're under 10 minutes to go. Vanderbilt, like Tennessee, dominated the clock in the first quarter. They're doing it here in the second quarter. 
Nixon inside handoff. There's stopped inside the 10, picked up about two. Jackson Garrison by tackled by Marvin Mitchell. And it will be the second down. Just the inside trap play to Garrison from the shotgun. That's, it looks like a, a different type of play, but all, essentially that's all it is, is a trap play. Chris Nixon, shotgun formation, second down and goal. Keeps it himself. He's going to be stopped at the seventh. Gain of about a yard, Robert Ayers. So now Vanderbilt faced with a third and goal. That's good defense by Ayers. They faked a, faked a little sweep with Walker coming in motion. He fakes it to him and then tries to just run the quarterback draw up the middle. Ayers wasn't buying it. Did a good job of stopping him a little or no game. Third down and goal at the Tennessee seven. Nixon out of the shotgun. Two receivers left, one right. Nixon throwing over the middle. Touchdown, Vanderbilt. George Smith with a reception from seven yards from Chris Nixon, and Vanderbilt has tied the game at six. And just a really nice concept. Vanderbilt offensively. They lined up Earl Bennett in the backfield, swung him out to the left. You know who you're going to be looking for down there. It's going to be Earl Bennett. Your eyes go outside. You slip George Smith across the middle in the back of the end zone. and just hit the open area, and you just put a ball right on the money. Hahn felt the extra point attempt. It is there, and Vanderbilt has taken the lead. 7-6 with 23 to go in the first half. Vanderbilt with an impressive looking drive. Commodores have taken the lead with 8.23 to go in the first half. We'll be back. Vanderbilt has taken the lead. They have totally dominated the, the scoreboard clock in the second quarter. They have a 7-6 lead. David Yancey and Marcellus Johnson back deep to receive the kick for Tennessee. With 16 plays, 92 yards. Unbelievable. Very Ten impressive. Yeah, run. Tennessee's offense needs to return the favor. This one will be returnable. Back to just inside the goal line is Marcellus Johnson. And he's hit and dropped shy of the 20. Vanderbilt got down there and covered it quickly. There was a hole, but it filled up very quickly with black shirts. Fontaine Hunter made the tackle for Vanderbilt. 15 plays, 92 yards, seven and a half minutes of the clock. Seven yard touchdown pass reception by George Smith from Chris Nixon. Coker's back in at tailback. Tennessee has not had the ball in a while. Vanderbilt has a seven to six lead. Play action. Aim. Slip screen to the right side. Meets him with running room. First down, Tennessee out to the 35. Goes Robert Meacham, a pickup of 15 yards for the Volunteers. It worked earlier, so why not go back to it just to the other side of the field? That time he's doing it to the right side to Meacham. Eric Young is out there diving at the quarterback's feet, giving Meacham a chance to get it upfield. There's Meacham. He almost broke it. First down at the 35 yard line. Two receivers left, one run. Quick drop by Ames, pass caught by Meacham, and he gets very close to another first down. They have it. Jared Fagan knocked him down. He is just shy of the 45, but I think that's a 10-yard. I know it's a 10-yard pickup, but I think it's enough for a first down, and it is. I think 10 yards and an inch. He'll do it every time. Good read by uh, Ames there. They showed a double zone look. With, usually the corners bump up. You can't get that little sideline pass, but the corner dropped off. Ains saw it, he got it out there quick. First down, Tennessee, out to the 45. Ains with two receivers left and two in the backfield. They get it straight ahead, huge hole. This is Coker. First down, Tennessee inside the Vanderbilt 45. 
goes LaMarcus Coker. Ryan Hamilton tackled him as Tennessee has made three first downs, three consecutive plays. There you got Coker, the delay draw on the left side. Got a, got a lot of blocking, got a good shot by Swain there. Takes it up the field, breaks one tackle. Couldn't shake the second one, but it was enough, as you said, for the third straight first down. Line of scrimmage is the Vanderbilt 42 yard line. First down, Ames. Rolling right, rolling right. Looking, pass caught. Wide open at the 20. Inside the 15 goes Jason Swain. And for the fourth straight play, the Volunteers pick up another Volunteer first down. Yeah, and that's the best one of all. Swain here. Ames is moving right. Swain's running the corner pattern here. He makes a nice adjustment to just pull up in the hole, come back. Ames finds him. He makes a nice fingertip catch. Takes it up, gets it inside the 15 yard line. Line of scrimmage almost the Vanderbilt 13. First down, Tennessee. Two receivers left. Coker is in the backfield. Coker on a delay. To the left, Coker inside the 10. Oh. Slips and falls at the about the seven yard line. He got up okay. I was worried like you. I thought he may have re-injured that knee. Yeah, he got a bad piece of turf there. He got just a great block. This is another delay draw to the left side. Sears seals down. Gets a great block by Swain out there. Really had something to the inside. He tried to bust it out, lost his footing. Gain of five, second down and five, Tennessee. Line of scrimmage the seven. Coker busts it to the right. Coker to five. Coker touchdown. Big orange. A penalty marker is down. We'll see what it's all about. It's against Vanderbilt. It will be a Tennessee touchdown, and the Volunteers have regained the lead. Yeah, Tennessee's offense. Made that look easy, gives the ball to Coker. He busts to the outside. All he has to do is outrun one guy, vaults in the end zone. Five plays, six plays. They didn't want to run 15. They wanted to conserve their energy. Great drive <laughs> by the offense to answer Vanderbilt's touchdown. I tell you, that's one of the most impressive drives they've had all year. It is. They're going to need another one or more. Tennessee with a 12-7 lead. Will Hoyt will attempt the extra point, and it's there. With 5.53 to go in the first half, Tennessee has regained the lead over Vanderbilt. It's Tennessee 13, Vanderbilt 7. We'll be back on a beautiful day in Nashville right after this. Boy, that was an impressive drive. Didn't take up a lot of time, Pat, as you said, but Tennessee looked sharp. Very well, sharp. Well, they really did. I mean, they went one play, first down. Two plays, another first down. Three plays, another first down. Four plays, another first down. You know, it's just like they were just knocking off big chunks of yards. Here it is, six plays, 80 yards, two minutes and 19 seconds. It was a great answer to Vanderbilt's touchdown. Will Hoyt with a bobble, with a kick that is bobbled at the five. Uh, Sean Walker, who is absolutely going nowhere, did not make it back to the 10-yard line. A wobbly squib kick that time by Will Hoyt, and Vanderbilt could do very little with it. Well, here's Vanderbilt, the little delay to Case and Jackson Garrison for the big gain up the middle. Then Nixon breaks it outside to get to the first down marker on the outside. And there's your crossing pattern in the back of the end zone for the six points. Last time Vanderbilt drove for a touchdown, they started with worst field position they have now. Yeah. Starting at the eight with 92 yards. They're at the 10. It is a first down. Nixon. A blitz. They hit him just before he unloaded the football. Incomplete. Robert Ayers lowered the boom on Nixon. Uh, he was trying to get that ball out to the right side, either down the seam or on the right sideline, but Ayers came through from the blind side. Nixon didn't know, didn't know he was there and took a heck of a shot. Second down and 10. They rule it an incomplete pass, but Robert Ayers says that felt good. I want some more. Nixon keeps it. Tennessee slowed him up. 
They spin him back to the left. They got him back at the six-yard line. Great defensive coverage by the Volunteers. Ryan Carr the finally made the tackle for Tennessee. Well, I tell you what, that's guys staying where they're supposed to be on defense, holding their lane, gets a good rush by Ayers. Nixon takes off running. Guys are home. He's got no place to run. Finally gets over there. Ryan Carl stays where he's supposed to be, makes a tackle for a four-yard loss. Third down and 14. Ryan Carl, junior linebacker from nearby Franklin, Tennessee. Vanderbilt is four of six on third down conversion. Nixon, the keeper. Tennessee stops him. It's going to be way shy of the first down. And Ryan Carl and Ricardo Kemp made the tackle. It'll be fourth down upcoming for Vanderbilt. Well, Vanderbilt going the safe route, just keeping the ball in the quarterback's hands, hoping that he can find a gap, get to the first down yards. If not, move it out a little bit where they can punt the football away. Tennessee plays good defense, tackles him way short of the sticks. Brent Upson will stand in his end zone to punt it away. Hefty at midfield to receive it for Tennessee. Low kick. Tennessee almost got it. Wobbly kick. They're not going to catch it. It's going to bounce out of bounds. Shy of the Vanderbilt 45. So great field position upcoming for Tennessee. First down at the Vanderbilt 44-yard line. A 38-yard punt that time by Upson. And we'll take a break. 344 to go. Tennessee leading Vanderbilt 13 to 7 in Nashville. Three minutes, 44 seconds to go in the first half. Average starting field position for the game. Vanderbilt's on 14. Tennessee is averaging starting on their own 32. Makes it a little easier. Who's taking the snap? It's Lucas Taylor. Colt, or rather, uh, Compton is in the game. Now he's going to keep it, and he's going to be down at the 50. It's a loss of five. Colton on the carry. That play by number was set up with Lucas Taylor taking the snap at quarterback. Faked the handoff to Meacham. Gave it to Crompton, who was going to obviously throw it maybe to Taylor. Broderick Stewart said, we'll have none of that. It's a loss of five, second down, 15. Nice try, but Ainge is back in. A lot of stuff going on uh, just didn't work. Ainge back to throw. Caught. That'll work every time. Swain inside the 40. Gets almost all of it back. In fact, he's very close to a first down anyway. Jason Swain with a pickup of 14. It'll be third and one upcoming. Yeah, just a little short. Tennessee runs the, runs the bunch formation to the right. By that, you got three receivers together. And in the snap, they all split and spread out. And uh, Eric took the middle guy, which Vanderbilt lost, and that was Swain for 14 yards. Eric Ames may be changing the play. Gives it to Hardest. He is tripped up and is dropped for a loss. Back at the 37. Stephen Stone, a freshman defensive end, got in there and tripped him up on a great play. Yeah, it's good defense by Vanderbilt. Tried to bounce it outside. Well, bouncing it outside on this particular play was not where you wanted to go because too many black shirts out there. Should have stayed to the inside. Would have had a chance for his first down yardage. Well, the Volunteers are only one out of five in third downs, but they're now faced with a fourth down and three, and they're going for it. Ames will set up in the shotgun. Meacham comes into motion to the left side. Ames rolling left. Dumps it. Caught. First down. It will be Brett Smith inside the 20. Brett Smith down to the 17-yard line on a Tennessee first down. Well, that's what happens when you have time to find receivers. He had three receivers to one side. Vanderbilt does a good job initially of covering everybody up. But Ainge is rolling out, didn't get a lot of pressure. He had time to give Brett Smith a chance to uncover inside of the defense. Ainge finds him. He takes it up for a fourth down conversion that Tennessee really needed. Two receivers right, one left. Hardesty still in a tailback for Tennessee. It's a first down at the Vanderbilt 18. Ames, big hole. They give it to Hardesty. The hole filled up quickly, but he moves ahead for good yardage. Ryan Hamilton makes the tackle, but not before he picks up six yards. 
And with less than a minute to go, Tennessee is requested and gets a timeout. In a five yards on the play. Well, Lane's hands off straight up the field. You got the free safety, Ryan Hamilton. He comes up. He's, he's the guy that you can't account for on that play. He comes in unblocked, but still uh, you gain a couple yards on the play when the safety's filling the hole. Good, good hole by the offensive line. Well, Tennessee uses the timeout to discuss strategy here with 52 seconds. They want to put six more points on the board. No more field goals. No, they don't want a field goal here. They've had too much success moving the football in the last two drives. Uh, seven for three points would be a real downer here. Second down and five. Ains and a shotgun by himself. No running backs with him. Ains back to throw. They're coming on a blitz. He throws the pass incomplete near the five. Lucas Taylor, the intended receiver, and Vanderbilt was coming hard with a blitz. That was Marcus Bugs coming hard from the left side. Yeah, Bugs comes untouched. Eric finds the right guy to throw to. He just did not have a chance to deliver the ball where he could catch it. It'll be third down and five upcoming. 46 seconds to go. I think you're going to see Vanderbilt when Tennessee spreads it and spreads them out like they did last time. They're going to blitz. They're going to make A's get rid of the ball quick. Vanderbilt there coming hard again. Ains pass caught at the five, still on his feet. He gets out of bounds. No, they say they rule him in bounds. But it is a first down. Meacham, the intended receiver, tried to get out of bounds and did, but they ruled him in. Well, there's the blitz again. Ains does a good job of just catching that ball and getting rid of it. Meacham gets enough, gets out there, gets to his first down yardage, and gets out of bounds. And Tennessee calls Tennessee. another timeout. Meacham's knee time hit the, the ground just before his foot got out of bounds. It looked from my angle that he was out, but they ruled him in with a good call. Yeah, so Tennessee had to eat up, eat another timeout. I believe that do they have one left? They have one left. Yeah. In case they need it, save it for the field goal. Hopefully, they won't need it for the field goal. Tennessee will have it first down and goal at the Vanderbilt six. At 36 seconds, you've got plenty of time to do a number of things here. You could even run one, run it once with 36 and still. And and that probably wouldn't be that bad of an idea. Coker's had a pretty good, uh, you know, pretty good success in the last drive on a few runs, and you might just take Vanderbilt's defense by surprise. Tennessee leads it 13 to 7. The Commodores watched as Tennessee ran up and down the field and came up with two field goals in the first quarter. Then Vanderbilt dominated the first part of the second quarter of the clock. He got a touchdown to go ahead, seven to six. Vanderbilt used, or Tennessee used two minutes and 12 seconds to move ahead 13 to seven. And then they had a really good defensive stand uh, to hold Vanderbilt on their next offensive Vanderbilt. series. And that sets up this drive. And Vanderbilt has three timeouts remaining. They use one of them here. So they said, well, we saw what formations you're going to use. We're going to call a timeout. Just a chess match. Everybody's trying to get one up on everybody else. They still don't know what kind of play you're going to run. You know, they might act like they do, but they don't. Vanderbilt coming into the game four and seven on the year. This is their last game of the season. And you know you, we were talking about that the students all leave at Thanksgiving and they didn't want to play the game on the last weekend of the season because there would be nobody here. Well you know in 20 minutes before the football game it looked like they'd all <laughs> left anyway because late there, arrived. Were, there wasn't anybody here but a lot of late arrivals for this ball game the stands filled up a lot of orange here. Well the game is officially a sellout and their first sellout since the Alabama game back in 1999. All right, now they're coming out of the, uh, and now a Vanderbilt player's in the Tennessee huddle. Yeah, that's a good way to get hurt. My I goodness. Mean, I mean, really hurt. Yeah. Not, not just uh, slapped around a little bit, I mean hurt. It'll be first and goal <laughs> Well, let's see what happens to him on this play. The three receivers to the left, there is a one setback. That's number six, a freshman. 
And that's fly. Don't be shocked to see Ains throw the fade where they drop off now. Ains throws it over the head of the intended receiver. Jason Swain, it will be second down and goal upcoming. You know, it's just uh, the pressure got to Ains that time. He didn't have time to let Swain uncover. He got good, good pressure by Gatewood. He's in his face. He had to throw the ball early. Ball came out high. It took six seconds off the clock. Exactly 30 ticks left in the first half. Meacham to the left. Brent Smith, Lucas Taylor, and Jason Swain to the right. Hardesty is the tailback. Ains rolling right. Looking, dumping. Pass incomplete. Intended for Swain in the end zone. And a thought there was third a marker. Coming. I thought there was too, but I didn't see it. Third down upcoming. And Vanderbilt's coming after him. They're not going to give Eric Haynes time to stand around. They're going to bring the blitz. They're going to bring more guys than Tennessee can pick up in the alignment that they have, and they're going to make him make a quick decision to get rid of the football. Tennessee still has one timeout left. The Volunteers at 23 seconds. It's third down and goal of the Vanderbilt six yard line. Ains, maybe changing the play. Ains back to throw. Throws it over the middle. Wide open. Touchdown. Big orange. Jason Swain right under the goal post. And that looked just too easy, to be honest. That's a, it's a crossing pattern by Swain. That time Vanderbilt did not blitz, but what Tennessee did, they swung Meacham out to the right side, and he froze two Vanderbilt defenders, and Swain came in right behind him, wide open in the back of the end zone. Vanderbilt's going to call time because Tennessee is going to line up and go for two. Vanderbilt. That's the first touchdown pass for, uh, thrown today by Eric Ames. The other one was scored on a run by Coker. So now Vanderbilt calls time. Trooper Taylor doing the bump, pumping them as they come off the field. Yeah, Trooper's having a big time over there. He, he was dancing a minute ago. <laughs> Uh, let's take a look at the standings of the Southeastern Conference as we go into this weekend's game. Some big games to later today down at Alabama, Auburn and Alabama, the Iron Bowl. That's a big one. And of course, the Michigan Ohio State game starting about the same time. SEC East, Florida wrapped it up early. Nine and one for the sixth ranked Gators. Tennessee, seven and three. And look who's in second place right now, Kentucky. Four and three. They have one conference game left. That's with Tennessee next Saturday. Kentucky, second place. Well, they're <laughs> going to a bowl too. They're six and four. Well, good for them. I mean, you yeah. know, that's, you can't. You know, that's uh, it's good for the SEC. Some of these teams to have have up yours. I mean, you, you can't be in the cellar all the time. And Vander and Kentucky's done a good job of winning some football games this year and, and elevating their program to the point where they can go to a bowl. Rich Brooks needed to win a few at least to save his job. I think he did more than that. Yeah, I think he did. Two receivers left, one, uh, two, two receivers right, one left. Ainge with one setback. That is Hardest. Throws the pass incomplete. The pass was caught and then dropped by Jason Swain, who caught the touchdown. So the two point conversion is no good. Number six is still running his mouth for Vanderbilt. That is Darlton Speed. Well, Darlton Speed and Joel Caldwell were both <laughs> flapping her yet pretty good. And you know what? Bill Fulmer wants to talk about this too. Uh, they're not supposed to let you get away with getting in people's faces and jumping up and down. And that's what both those guys are doing. Pass was on the money on that particular play. Swain's there. Pretty good coverage by Caldwell. He knocks it out. Then he starts into the yapping and talking and in your face stuff. And that's you're, that's supposed to draw him the flag. Yeah, that, that's not good. Ten plays, 44 yards. Tennessee with a 19 to 7 lead. Bobby Johnson doesn't like it either because when speed came off the field, he got in his face. That's why you have situations like they had at Miami several years, uh, several weeks ago. Yeah, that stuff can't escalate. You're no, right. You, uh, you got to nip that in the bud right away. 
Because this is an emotional game, and you can't take young men who are trained for physical contact and let them abuse each other in any way and not expect them to retaliate. Uh, that is true. And uh, now that said, I think there were some, you know, little, the character on the field down there at Miami is a little more question, you know, question, <laughs> question than what you have on this field. But. Well, we have 17 seconds to go. Coach Fulmer is still talking to the official around the 20 yard line and he's still drawing it. I promise you that's what he's he's talking about. He's a big, you know, you guys have been throwing flags on us all year for this and that. You're letting, you know, letting this stuff go on right right in front of you. I can understand if you missed it, didn't see it, but it was out there for the world to see. And you were standing right there. Well, he's also talking about he wants to know if that ball, he thinks Previous the ball may have been caught. Further review. I thought so. That might have been what he was talking about. It, I tell you what, it was still more of a catch than that one the Florida receiver made at our goal line in 2000. I didn't see it. I, I <laughs> still have not seen a replay of it. Uh, yeah. Plus, he, you know, the, the defender also came down over his back, too. Can we look at it? Let's look at it again. While they look at it, we'll look at it. Now, Ainge is going to drop back and throw. Now, watch. Hang on to it. No. You know? no. But was he interfered with? Well, they can't review that. I don't believe uh, you really got to throw that After flag. After further no. review, video evidence confirms that the player did not have control of the ball. The extra point is no good. Well, Coach Fulmer still doesn't agree, but nevertheless, Tennessee has a 19 to 7 lead and will kick off to Vanderbilt with 17 seconds to go. What's it taken us to play these last 52 seconds? About 20 minutes? At least. At least. Well, we had, I believe, five timeouts. Was it five timeouts and then you your official timeout here? If I had a refrigerator up here, I'd, I'd been <laughs> in it three or four times by now. Another squib kick by Wilhoy. Taken up about the 25-yard line. Vanderbilt trying to get out of bounds. That's number five for the Commodores. One of the up men for Vanderbilt. And we'll find out who that is. That is Myron Lewis, a freshman from Pompano Beach, Florida. He didn't get out of bounds, so seven seconds. And when they mark the ball, and the teams will go to the locker room. Pretty good first half for Tennessee. The Volunteers struggled in the middle of the second quarter when Vanderbilt used the seven and a half minutes for a, at the time, go ahead touchdown. But the Volunteers are in control at this point, 19 to seven at halftime, as the Volunteers are still talking with security and the officials. We'll be back. Tennessee leads Vanderbilt 19 to 7 here at halftime as Vanderbilt used up a lot of clock seven and a half minutes on a very impressive 92 yard drive to take the lead and then Tennessee has scored twice since then for a 19 to 7 advantage and Pat let's look at the highlights. Well here you go Vandy highlights a little dump pass to Garrison Jackson Garrison up the middle for big yards. Same drive, Nixon slips outside of Rico McCoy and gets the first down on the sideline. And here's the touchdown play and pass across the middle to George Smith for the sixth point. Here's Tennessee, here's Coker breaking to the outside, getting some extra yards, breaking the tackle. And here's a touchdown. Leads one defender and ball to the end play. Here's a good shot, a nice catch by Nixon on the sideline. Trying to get out of bounds to save time, and here's Eric Haynes going for six points to Swain. Swain wide open in the end zone to get Tennessee the lead, 19 to seven. And your statistics, pretty big advantage for the Volunteers, 236 yards to 123 for Vanderbilt. Good mix for Tennessee as well. 13 to seven in first downs, and just about every first down Vanderbilt had was in that one touchdown drive. 
Penalties haven't been much of a factor, and Tennessee still owns the clock, even though Vanderbilt used seven and a half minutes in one possession. Tennessee will start the second half by kicking off to Vanderbilt. Sean Walker and Josh Allen will be back deep to receive. And Coach Phillip Fulmer was upset right before the half because one of the officials supposedly signaled for not a touchdown because the two-point conversion signaled good, and they ruled it no good. Well, the, the correct call was made. We saw in the replay he didn't catch it, that football, but apparently one official thought it was good, and that was the argument Phelps was making. Will Hoyt will kick it, and the second half is underway. A real big foot, almost another long field goal, and Vanderbilt brings it out to the 20-yard line. And Coach Fulmer was pretty upset right before the half. In fact, even at halftime, he's talking with the official about it. Well, he's just laying the groundwork. He said, you know what? I want one or two here in the second half. Yeah. Yeah, between you and me. First down, Vanderbilt at the 20. Chris Nixon has gone all the way at quarterback for Van. Tennessee leads it 19 to 7. In motion to the near side is Sean Walker. Nixon. A quick hitter and spun away. Pass complete to Earl Bennett. Jonathan Wade was right there to drop him. And it's a loss of about four. And they tried to quick screen, had, had Walker in motion. He's supposed to come out and block Wade. Wade's got some size on him, if you can believe. Wade's bigger than anybody. He's bigger than Walker. Walker. Just didn't do a good job of sealing him off, and Wade blasted through that and made the tackle in the backfield. Vanderbilt's first half possessions, punt, punt, touchdown, punt. Not much. Nixon back to throw. Has time. Pass is incomplete. Intended for number 80. That's George Smith, number 88. And Tennessee's Hapney was back defending for the Volunteers. It will be third and long for Vanderbilt. Well, Tennessee brought the blitz. Vanderbilt did a good job of picking it up. George Smith is running a corner route, but doesn't think he's going to get the football, so he just kind of jogs out there. That's who Nixon wanted to go to. If he'd have run the route strong, he'd have probably been open there on the right sideline. Vanderbilt faced with a third down and 14, the first possession of the second half. Nixon with nobody back in the backfield but him. And Tennessee jumped offside. Turk McBride jumped, but was he drawn off? Yeah, I think he's he's thinking that it looked like the center moved the football a little bit. I don't know if the fish was going to buy that. Tennessee's retreating, so they're going to move it up five yards. It'll be third and nine. Offside. Number 40 on the defense. Penalty is five yards from the previous spot. The result of the penalty is the first down. Well, McBride was arguing that the centers moved the football. Down. You can actually jump, you can move the football as long as you don't pick it up off the ground or move it straight back. Well, you know, in the NFL, they pick it up, take it all oh, over yeah. the place. They, they let you do whatever the heck you want with it. Nixon. Tennessee's coming hard. He dumps it over the middle. It is caught. Incomplete. They rule it incomplete at the 32-yard line. Earl Bennett almost made a great grab. But they rule it incomplete, and Vanderbilt will punt the football. Boy, was Tennessee coming hard. Yeah, they were coming. You know, and they were really putting the pressure on Nick. He does a good job just getting this football off in the middle of the field. And Bennett all makes a great effort to try and scrape that thing off the turf. He just couldn't quite control it. Thompson will stand at his five and punt the ball away. Hefney will return it from the 35-yard line. Pretty good kick by Upson. Drives Hefney back to the 40. He falls down, and he will be down at that point. He might have had some running room had he not fallen right there. Well, they had a, a pretty good wall set up there on the left side. He just couldn't get to it. So Tennessee will get the football. There is a flag on the play dropped up near the 40 yard line of Vanderbilt. Let's see what that's about. Face mask, number 20, on the receiving team. It's post scrimmage kick and force. It'll be five yards from the end of the kick. Incidental face mask against Tennessee's Demetrius Morley.
So that is only the second penalty against Tennessee today. Well, Tennessee continues with good field position on their starting spots. 34 yard line. Tennessee leads 19 to 7. Ames back to throw. Dumps it over the middle. Pump. Swing out to the 43 yard line. Very close to a first down. Pick him up. Now they say he's back at the uh, seven yard pickup, so it's not close to a first down, but it's good yardage. It'll be second and three. Ted Bunch formation they used earlier in the game. Same play. Swain just runs straight down the field, hooks up, and Vanderbilt's defense loses him. Tennessee's first possessions of the game field goal, field goal, punt, touchdown, touchdown. This is Coker. Coker's got the first down, crossing midfield. Jonathan Goff trips him up, but not before Coker picks up good yardage and a Tennessee first down. Just a good trap play. Got a good, good block by a pull there on Aaron Sears. Gave him a chance to get out on the corner, get up the field. Coker still in a tailback. Six rushes, 41 yards, and a touch today for LaMarcus Coker. Right at midfield. Play action. Ames. Pass caught by Big Brown Cottom. He's at the 20. Cottom at the 10. Cottom knocked out of bounds at the five yard line. And Big Brad Cottom was wide open for Tennessee. Hey, and that's that same bunch formation. Cottom's in the mix there. Play action pass kind of fooled Vanderbilt's defense. Cottom got wide open on a flag pattern on the right sideline, and Ames found him. Cottom's a guy that they, they really like. He is really coming on the last four or five games. He's a big guy, 6'8, 260 pounds, that can really run once he catches the football. He's going to be a real good weapon for them in the future. Tennessee's got the football at the Vanderbilt six yard line. First and goal. Coker straight ahead to the four. Theo Horrocks from his defensive tackle position made the tackle for Vanderbilt. And it will be second and goal from the four yard line. Pickup of two. Ames has 231 yards passing, and we still have almost 12 minutes to go in the third quarter. We've been very accurate, too. We missed probably four or five balls today. Draw play, Coker spinning his way to the two yard line, knocked back to the three. Horrocks again makes the tackle, and again, Tennessee's faced with a third down and goal. Pretty strong stand by Vanderbilt's defense. It looked like there was a pretty nice hole there to start with, but Vanderbilt closed it quick. Well, Vanderbilt. Not allowing to be pushed away by the offensive line, that's for sure. It's at the three yard line. Third and goal for Tennessee. They give it to Coker, who's going to be stopped back at the five. That play had no chance because Vanderbilt was coming in from the corners. Loss of three, Fontaine Hunter was the first black shirt to get there, along with Chris Booker. Yeah, corner, uh, Vanderbilt blitzed off the corner. Just too many, too many guys there. You got a guard pulling, but he can only block one guy. And there were three there. Coker had no place to go. 22-yard field goal upcoming by James Wilhorn, who is two for two from 48 and 27. 43 and 27. And this one is good. Three for three for Will Hoyt. There were 10 minutes and 12 seconds to go in the third quarter. Tennessee has extended the lead over Vanderbilt. The Volunteers now lead 22 to 7 here in Nashville. Stay with us. We'll be back to Vanderbilt Stadium in just a moment. There's a shot at the pride of the Southland Band who made the trip down today from Knoxville. Tennessee with a 22 to 7 lead following. The third field goal of the game by James Wilhoyt. Wilhoyt will now kick it off for Tennessee. Walker and Allen 
who have not been able to return one today. I don't believe that. I think all every kickoff he's had has gone into the end zone, except one. And that one was fumbled. Right, fumbled around. So Will Hoyt kicks it off at the. This one is going to go way deep into the end zone and out of the end zone. Will Hoyt with a strong leg. Vanderbilt's got a player down, and Tennessee's going to step over. Well, there's no love loss between these two teams, is there? You know, that goes back a lot of years. You don't know where it started or where it came from, but uh, you're indoctrinated early. If you're a Tennessee guy, you do not. Okay. And Brandon Bryant's getting some help off the field for Vanderbilt. Coming off on his own power, so that's good. So Vanderbilt now trailing Tennessee 22 to 7. We'll put it in play first down at the 20. Nixon with three receivers to the right, one to the, actually two to the left. Nobody in the backfield with him. He's going to throw it. It's caught and dropped by Bennett. Bennett had Marvin Mitchell bearing down on him hard. And Bennett dropped the ball. Yeah, you don't see that much out of Bennett. Uh, just a little sideline wrap from the slot position. Mitchell was behind him, but the ball's there. That's a catch Bennett normally makes. He's been really quiet today. This guy you know, caught 11 passes for 220 yards last week. So far today, three catches, 16 yards. Jackson Garrison in the backfield with Nixon. Second down and 10. In motion goes Sean Walker. They give it to this is Nixon who keeps it to the 25. It'll be a pickup of five. Rico McCoy, Tennessee's sophomore line, a freshman linebacker, makes the play. Gerard Mayo is out of the game, probably with a knee. So we'll know more about that when the game's over. Third down and five upcoming. You know, we talk about the series between Vanderbilt and Tennessee. Tennessee's dominated it, but before General Nealon was hired to coach here, Vanderbilt led 17 to 2. That's probably where the hatred came from. General Nealon started the winning tradition against Vanderbilt. Nixon, third down and five. Spinning. They're coming out. And everybody's covered. He dumps it away. It's incomplete. A flag is down. A second flag goes down. Well, they got, they got uh, Ricardo Kemp twice on this play. They got him for holding initially on the receiver on the outside, and then they got him as the play unfolded. They got him again. I would imagine this is going against Vanderbilt. We'll see. Well, they've had a lot of discussions on every penalty. They'll huddle up. I guess you get it right. Holding against Tennessee. Yeah, I think they got Kim. And there's a Tennessee player standing near the Vanderbilt huddle. And what is that about? I don't know. Maybe he thinks he can hear something. Well. There's no foul. No foul. No foul. Wave it off. No, that's for the pass interference. For the pass. Ten yards from the previous spot. An automatic first down. Well, Coach Fulmer is livid on the other side again. He's out on the field. That's what I was saying. See, they got Kemp on the initial hold when the receiver came off the line of scrimmage. And then later as the play unfolded, they threw the ball his way. He interfered. And so it was two fouls on Kemp on the same play. First down, big break for Vanderbilt out to the Tennessee 35. Nixon will work out of the shotgun again. Tennessee coming after him, deflected, and then caught. By Sean Walker at the 40, still on his feet at the 45. He has a first down for Vanderbilt. My goodness, Tennessee got it up. He deflected the ball right into the hands of Sean Walker. This is this is this is a tough play for a defensive player because the defensive line they tell you you can't get there. 
Get your hands up, see if you can get your hands on the football. They do that, the ball bounces straight to, to Walker in an open position and gives him room to run for the first down. Two big breaks, both of them going Vanderbilt's way in this possession. It's at the 45 of the Commodores, first down. Nixon rolling right, going to keep, got some running room. Goes down at the 50 after he picks up five, and it will be second down upcoming for Vanderbilt. Well, good coverage downfield by the secondary. He wanted to throw the ball either on the corner pattern or on the sideline right there. Both those guys were covered, so he just had to turn it upfield. You got a guy that can run like that, though, and once he turns it upfield, he's going to get four or five yards. Picked up four instead of five, so it's second down and six. Vanderbilt with only two down defensive linemen. There's an option play. Nixon pitches back to Jackson Garrison, who has some running room. He has the first down. But boy, was Chris Nixon ever hammered back at the 45-yard line. Ryan Carl laid the wood to him just as he got rid of the ball and tossed it to Jackson Garrison. Yeah. Just a reverse option play down this way. Carl takes him out, but Marlon White gets a good block on Jonathan Wade on the outside, giving Jackson a chance to hit the seam and get it up past the four, right to the 40-yard line. It's at the Tennessee 40. First down, Vanderbilt. Tennessee leading it 22 to 7. Nixon. And a penalty marker goes down. Illegal procedure upcoming against Vanderbilt. I think. Prior to the snap, false start. Yep. Number 60 on the the Backup center, five. Bradley Veerling, freshman. In there playing, and you know, Bobby Johnson's team is going to win four games unless they come back and beat Tennessee today. They would have five, but they're playing a lot of freshmen, a lot of sophomores, a really young team. You know, they, they've got a lot of talented folks on this football team, and as you said, most of them are underclassmen. First down at 15. Nixon hands it to the tailback. That's Ryan Carl making the tackle on number 31, Jared Hawkins. A gain of two, and that will bring up second down and about 12, 14 yards. Clock moving, 6.42 to go here in the third quarter. Tennessee with a lead, but Vanderbilt started at the 20 and has moved now to the Tennessee 43-and-a-half yard line. Casson Jackson Garrison back in the backfield along with Nixon. Three receivers right for Vandy. Nixon. Back to throw, throws it high, way over the head of Bennett. Also way over the head of Antoine Stewart, who was defending for Tennessee, and that brings up third and long for the Commodores. Just a wild throw by Nixon in the head. Earl Bennett coming in on a little stop and hide pattern on the right side, five yards. Just tried to fire it in there a little too hard. The thing went about 15 feet over his head. Today, Vanderbilt four of eight. On the year, they're only 33%. They're much better than that today. But this is a big one. Tennessee showing blitz. Third down, they're coming. Nixon unloads it deep, intended for George Smith over his head, out of bounds, incomplete. Turk McBride was coming hard after Chris Nixon. That'll be fourth down. A yeah, good rush by Turk on the play, forcing Nixon to throw the ball before he wanted to. He, wa he wanted to get Smith on that corner pattern, but he had to throw it a little too soon, and consequently the ball went wide. Hefney will receive the punt standing at the Tennessee 10. Brent Upson will punt it away. And he stands inside his 45. Low kick. Signaling for a fair catch and making it is Hefney at the 13, and that's where Tennessee puts it in play, but only when we come back. 5.54 to go in the third quarter. Tennessee leading Vanderbilt 22 to 7. We'll be back. 
CSS is your home for college hoops. More than 200 men's and women's games this year, including six Lady Balls games. Check out CSS-sports.com for a complete basketball schedule. Pat, did you ever used to shave your head and paint it uh, no. when you were younger? No, no. Uh, shaved it every now and then, but never painted it. Yeah. 18 to 23, 231 yards and a touchdown. Pretty good day for Eric Ames, even with a bad ankle. Tennessee going to run it. Coker breaks it to the outside. Coker to the 30. Coker's going. He's at the 50. He's turning it on. Coker all the way to the 20. 10, 15. Touchdown, Big Orange. LaMarcus Coker all the way. 87 yards. Well, that was quick. Uh, <laughs> just a, a nice hole on the left side for Coker. He hits the hole, and one thing Coker has that some of these other guys don't have, he has that he has that bolt of speed that he can turn it on. He gets through the hole, gets good block, breaks it to the outside, and he hits the seam. And once he hits the seam, this guy's gone. 29, 23, they both think they've got a chance at him. No, they don't. Takes it down there, and then, for some reason, vaults into the end zone. I don't know. Will Hoyt's extra point is good, and with that, Tennessee goes up 29 to 7 on an 87 yard run by Lamarcus Coker. That's still two yards shy of his 89 yard romp against Marshall earlier in the year. Timeout, 526 to go in the third quarter, and Tennessee has extended its lead over Vanderbilt 29 to 7. 29 to 7. With 5.26 to go here in the third quarter. Scoring drive for Tennessee, 87 yards, one play. Marcus Coker has carried it 10 times for 128 yards. Two touchdowns today for Coker. Will Hoyt puts a leg into the ball about five yards deep in the end zone. They're going to bring it out. Sean Walker puts it out to the 25 to the 27 28 yard line so he was wise to bring it out i don't think tennessee was quite expecting him to bring it out but he did and a good return you know you can get a little to sleep when your kicker continues to kick it into the end zone you know after three or four times you have you know you don't quite put the effort into flying down field like you should and in that time walker made him pay for a little bit still only brought it out to the 28 yard line 33 yard return because he caught the ball about five yards deep in the end zone. First down, Vanderbilt out to the Tennessee 28. Walker in motion. There's the fake. Nixon rolling right, dumps it to Jackson Garrison, who is hammered and knocked out of bounds for a loss of about two, maybe three yards. Antoine Stewart was right there with him. Yeah, Van, Vanderbilt tries to create some create some confusion, faking the sweep to Walker, and then rolling right, trying to uh, get Jackson Garrison open on the right side. Well, Antoine Stewart, he didn't, uh, he wasn't fooled by it at all. He stayed home and was right there to make the play. They actually give him a loss of a yard. Second down and 11. Tennessee faking a blitz. Nixon keeps it himself. Good yardage. Stopped at the 34. Ryan Carl and Alex Wilson make the tackle for Tennessee. It'll be third down upcoming for Vanderbilt. Gain of seven on the play by Nixon. You know, Tennessee's really done a pretty good job of containing Nixon. You know, he's gaining yards. I mean, he's running these plays. He's getting four. He's getting five. But he's not getting the big gainers that, that you expect a guy like that to get when he breaks into the second. Tennessee staying at home, keeping him in front, making the play for minimal yards. Third down and five. Andy on third down conversions today, four of nine. Nixon flares it out to Bennett, caught and dropped for a loss. Ryan Carl had Bennett in his sights. Right at the time he caught the football, it'll be fourth down Vanderbilt. A good play by Carl because George Smith, he's out there. It's a, it's just a swing, a little bubble screen out to the right. George Smith has got to block Ryan Carl for this play to work. Ryan Carl said, no, I don't think so. 
Went right to him and hammered the receiver. Epney will receive the punt by Upson. Epney will stand inside the 30 yard line for Tennessee. Upson gets it away, a wobble kick off the side of his foot, bounces at the 40, and it's going to go out of bounds. Up at the Tennessee 37. So not a really good punt for Upson. Only 29 yards, and it gives Tennessee good field position at the Volunteer 37. Well, I said this back when when it happened, but if Eric Ainge had been healthy, Tennessee would have beaten LSU. And I think the possibility is definitely there. Of course, that's speculation. Sure it is. I'd be surprised. I want to see what happens on this drive. If Tennessee goes and gets points here, I'd say Eric Ainge's day might be over with. Vanderbilt on a blitz, caught by Chris Brown, runs over one man, out to the 47, gets about Nine, maybe ten. We'll see where they mark the football. Josh Allen is the one that he ran over. He just lowered his head and clobbered it. Yeah, Josh Allen got surprised here. Chris Brown catches it. He expects him to juke him and go around him. He said, you know, hell, I'm a tight end. I, I don't juke and go around anybody. Just ran him over. They give him nine. It'll be second down and less than one. Montario Hardesty is in the backfield along with Chris Brown. With Ainge. They give it to Hardesty, who gets the first down, breaks it to the outside. Hardesty's turning the corner. He's at the 35, out of bounds at the 30. First down, Tennessee. Josh Allen knocked him out of bounds. Hardesty needed about two feet for the first down and instead picked up a bunch of yards. 20 to be exact. We had a good job by the offensive line. They do a good job of giving Hardesty the cutback lane. And once he got in the cutback lane, there was nobody there. He turned on the speed and got to the sideline for big yard. It's at the 31 for Tennessee. Volunteers lead it 29 to 7. Ainge ends it straight ahead. Hardesty this time clobbered at the line of scrimmage, actually lost of a yard or so Roy Brown makes the tackle for Vanderbilt from his defensive tackle spot the senior playing his final game for the Commodores makes the tackle well as good as the blocking was on the last play it was bad on that play no, nobody got blocked at the point of the attack there were three guys there as soon as Harsey touched the football Loss of two, second down, and about well, a loss of three, second down and 13. Ains changing the play. And now he calls timeout. Timeout. And that is the first timeout that Tennessee calls this half. The first time the half. And the Volunteers lead it 29 to 7. LaMarcus Coker really surprised everybody, especially Vanderbilt, on that long 87-yard touchdown run a moment ago. There he takes the handoff. He just goes over the left side, just straight up, and then hits the seam and just turns on the Jets and says, try and catch me. I don't think you can. Of course, the somersault gives him style points. No more extra points for that, but nevertheless. I'm, I'm not a big fan of the somersault into the end zone. I, I, I've even seen high school kids start to do it. You know, mimicking what you see at higher levels, pro football, then it goes to college, then it goes to high school. Um, I'm waiting for somebody to blow out a shoulder or something like that. <laughs> and when then we did. won't see it. And then you won't see it anymore. But uh, <laughs> that that run took a lot of steam out of Vanderbilt. Before that, that touchdown, Vanderbilt really, you know, they can say, you know, we're still in this football game. But after that run, went down and scored. Then you stop them. They've showed on this defensive stand that they're a little demoralized. They're not putting up a lot of effort at this point. Under a minute to go in the third quarter. Tennessee with the ball, second down and 13. Haynes back to throw out of the shotgun, dumps it off to Cottom. Gets away from one man, picks up pretty good yardage, about seven yards. Brent Trice makes the tackle for Vanderbilt. And it will be third down upcoming for Tennessee. 
Tell you what, caught him has turned into a weapon. This guy, as I said before, he's big, he's mobile, he can run, he's got good hands. When you, you know, you take Meacham, you take Swain, you take Red Smith, and then you add in a big horse like this, and you've got a lot of, a lot of targets. Third down and seven, upcoming for, Van, uh, for Tennessee. It's inside the Vanderbilt 30. Ains back to throw out of the shotgun, pass caught by Brett Smith inside the 25. A flag is down. And so is Brett Smith. He's going to get up slowly, but he is getting up. Jonathan Goff and Darleton Speed, number six, the freshman, made the tackle. Well, let's see what this one's about. Holding. Number 66 on the offense. 10 yards from the previous spot. Replay third down. It's going to cost Tennessee 10 on holding. They will back it up now to the 37 yard line. Let's, let's take a look. He fell, he fell on the guy's head with the helmet. But we're not going to get this playoff. This will be the end of the third quarter. And it is. Pretty good day so far, but we still have 15 minutes of football to be played. The Tennessee leads Vanderbilt 29 to 7 as we get set to start the fourth and final quarter of play here in Nashville. We'll be back. Talking football as the college football season winds down. Talk heats up. Don't miss Talking Football Sunday at 8 on CSS. It's your source for Southeast Sports. Here are your third quarter stats. A big, big edge for Tennessee. Through three quarters of play, the Volunteers have 420 yards of total offense. And they're holding Vanderbilt to 157. That's the same offense that rolled up 620 last week on Kentucky. They should have saved a few of them, it looks like. And lost. 620 yes. yards and lost. I wonder how many times that's happened. Third and long for Ames. Down of his hands, loose football. Then recovered by Vanderbilt. They hit Ames from the blind side. Knocking the ball loose right before he unloaded. And Curtis Gatewood, I think, is the guy that got the hand on the ball or came up with it, one or the other. He actually recovered. If somebody come, comes around the end of the pile. The previous play is under further review. And gets the hand on, on the football. He pumps, pumps. I believe that, that's, a, that's a pretty clean fumble. Eric just held on to the football too long. Yeah, if he had thrown it the first time, yeah. Yeah, he would have been okay. He had open people on the left side. Uh, Brett Smith was open, coming right across his face initially. That's probably the guy he should have got it to. But I believe this was going to stand. This will be better than football. We're going to take another look while they continue to look at it as well. Ainge will step up and then he'll pump twice. Yeah, you'll see Smith crossing his face right there. That this is where he should have been. Well, that looked a little bit more like he was throwing the ball, but I still don't think it's enough to overturn it. After further review, video confirmed the call on the field. First out. So Vanderbilt gets the game's first turnover. And we're going to look at it again as Vanderbilt takes over. Best field position they've had in a long time. They'll start at the Commodore 43 as we look at it one more time. Jackson Garrison back in at tailback. Nixon back to throw, throws it. Incomplete. That was intended for Marlon White, number 82, and Tennessee had it well covered. Jonathan Wade right there with it. Yeah, anytime you see a receiver fall down like that through the ball, you, you're, you're holding your breath looking for a yellow flag because a lot of times that means he got pushed from behind. But Wade had good tight coverage on him, tried to hit the square end pattern, uh, just couldn't convert on it. Second down, Vanderbilt. 
the Commodore 43 yard line. Nixon fakes to Bennett in trouble gets away penalty marker goes down that's going to be a hold against Vanderbilt. He steps out of bounds but that's coming back. It's going to cost him. Tennessee did a great job of just building the wall there at the line of scrimmage. Nixon had no place to go. He looked left, looked the middle, looked right, just couldn't find an opening. Holding against Vanderbilt. That's going to back him up 10 yards and make it now second down and 20. Holding. Well, Tennessee had that. The they had it shut down. The penalty is 10 yards from the previous spot. Replay second down. Number 74, Chris Williams, 6'7", 315, junior tackle. There he is. He's the one guilty of holding. So now Vanderbilt, from the point of infraction, not the line of scrimmage, faced with a second down and a bunch. About 22. You got to think they'll be looking to Bennett here. He's your go to guy. He's the guy you got to get, get the football in his hands. Pass incomplete. <laughs> Tennessee was there. No flag. Demetrius Morley defending on Marlon White, the intended receiver. And now it's third down and a bunch for Vandy. Tried to run a little slant pattern on Jonathan Wade. Jonathan Wade's sitting short. I mean, he doesn't really have to move to cover that pattern. Tried to run the slant pattern and had it covered well. And, and Nixon, on top of that, just doing the dirt. Third down, about 22 for Vanderbilt. Nixon all alone in the backfield. Tennessee's coming after him. He dumps it right onto the hands of Antoine Stewart. Or Hefney who picks it off at the 30. Hefney inside the 20. And Tennessee gets a first down on the interception by Jonathan Hefney. Hefney had one earlier that was ruled incomplete because of or was negated because of the penalty. No flags this time, and the Volunteers take over. Well, I tell you what happened here. Nixon tried to get away with what he did in the first half, and that is throwing it at, at uh, Earl Bennett's back, expecting him to stop and catch the football. This time, Bennett didn't see it. It just kept running down the field. He threw it to a spot. Instead of him stopping and catching the ball, Heffy just stood there, took the gift, and went the other way with it. Tennessee now with the football inside the Vanderbilt 20. Ames fakes to Hardest. Throws it into the end zone. Touchdown, Robert Meacham. Touchdown, Big Orange. One play, 17 yards. Eric Ames to Meacham. Well, that, you know, it's a great luxury having a guy that's six foot three that also could get up and will go up for the football. This play's covered real well by Josh Allen. It's just a play action. It's a, it's a fade pattern down the right sideline trying to hit him in the back of the end zone. Allen's there. Ains just throws it up high and say, meets him, go up and get it. Will Hoyt will attempt the extra. Uh, Meacham was tiptoe on that sideline, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. It's good. Tennessee has extended the lead. The Volunteers 36, Vanderbilt 7, and we still have 13.49 to go in the football game. We'll be back to Nashville right after this. Tennessee now with a 36 to 7 lead, and I would say that's about the time when Ainge won't be back. You no. said it early. Yeah, I think uh, if he comes back, I will be shocked. Uh, I see somebody over there loosening up. I can't yeah, I believe that's Crompton. He's already loosening up, so we'll see him next. Will Hoyt kicks this one into the wind. High taken at the seven yard line by Sean Walker. Oh, he got some room down the sideline. Finally knocked out of bounds at the 45 after a 37 yard return. Well, I think the return team or the, the cover team lost the football because he ends up catching the ball on the right sideline. The gunner or the outside uh, guy from Tennessee's coverage team 
I don't believe he ever sees Walker until he runs by him. And then he had a free sideline. Good return, 37 yards by Sean Walker. So Vanderbilt down 36 to 7 with 13.26 to go in the game takes over at their own 47. Nixon intercepted, picked off again. Jonathan Wade at the 15, 10, 5, touchdown! Big orange. Now they say step down at the 13. Just reads, just reads the quarterback. Reaches drop here, sets short on the route, and essentially it, it turned out, it looked like Nixon is throwing the ball away. He just sits short on the route. Bennett doesn't go for it. Wade does. Nixon does a good job of forcing him to the sideline to prevent six points. Well, he barely stepped out. Jonathan Crompton will be in a quarterback. A timeout has been called by Vanderbilt with 13 minutes, 12 seconds to go. Vandy calls its second timeout of the half. And the Volunteers will have it first down and 10 at the Vanderbilt 13 and a half yard line. You know, you like a defense that forces turnovers. And I, I guess this is a culmination of, of, of everything they've done defensively today. But the last two interceptions have been gifts. Just bad throws by the quarterback. And we'll take a break. 13 12 to go in the football game. Tennessee 36, Vanderbilt 7. We'll be back to Nashville in a moment. Tennessee has extended the lead 36 to 7, and now the Volunteers have an entire second unit in the game. Jonathan Franco, quarterback. Fullback is Holbert, tailback is Foster. They give it to Foster, running right. Horse collar from behind for no gain by Theo Horace of Vanderbilt. So it'll be second down upcoming at the 13 and a half yard line. Jonathan Crompton, 31 out of 62 for the year, 401 yards, four touchdowns, two interceptions. Not bad. No, not bad considering the, the competition he's played. He's yeah, played LSU and Arkansas. Two that's... really good football teams the last, last couple of weeks. Long setback is Foster. Crompton straight drop, back to throw, high, over the head of the intended receiver. That's Jeff Cotton. Yeah, it's younger brother of Brad. Brad's little brother, if you can call a 6'8 guy uh, little. <laughs> but uh, this this is just a simple little crossing pattern. Crompton, he just throws it a little high. You know, and there might be a sun problem. Looks like the sun is setting. Uh, will be in their eyes going that direction. Third down and uh, about 11. Crompton back to throw, runs out of trouble. That's a group holding his, it's coming back because Stephen Jones was holding. I mean, he wasn't even, he was not just holding, he had. Both hands grabbing the guy right in front of the official. You know, but that's okay. You know, you, you get, you got pressure. Your quarterback's gonna, gonna get hit. You know, he's trying to keep his quarterback clean, keep him on his feet. If he's got to hold the guy to do that, so be it. Number 71 on the offense. Ten yards from the previous spot. Replay third down. Yeah, I gotta call that one from up here. Yeah, they, they, the other one's doing that all the time. But yeah. you know, oh, in a situation like that where things break down. Let's take a look at the hold. It's fourth down and a bunch. Watch it. Third and a bunch. Watch it. He had. <laughs> Come here. Come here. Where do you think you're going? <laughs> oh my. Well, you gotta. You can't fault the kids up. Drops it back to throw. Got a man there and complete. Intended for Corey Anderson. <laughs> And now it will be fourth down. Yeah, Curtis Gatewood came in there on the rush and, and would just hit Crompton right in the face as he's releasing his football. And just a little too far out there to end. Huh. Crompton can't go anywhere that running into something. Nope. 
So Will Hoy will attempt a field goal. It'll be against the wind. Actually, the wind's blowing side to side now. And it will be a 41 yard attempt with a slight angle to the right. And he got enough foot into it. And he made it against the wind from 41 yards out. James Wilhoy gives Tennessee a 42 to 7 lead over Vanderbilt. Or 39 to 7. They've been awfully slow to put the points up. I just did it for them. Made a mistake. We're just getting ahead of ourselves. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We'll take a break. 11:49 to go here in the football game. In Tennessee 39, Vanderbilt 7. We'll be back to the music city. Well, there's Coach Bobby Johnson, who is coaching his final game of this year. He's done a great job here at Vanderbilt. Five and six last year. Going to be four and eight this year, but. Anytime you've coached in two seasons at Vanderbilt and won a grand total of nine games, you're not doing badly. No, you're not. I, you know, and really, the current climate, how can you win more than five or six games at Vanderbilt? Boy, he hammered that sideways into the end zone about eight yards deep. Josh <laughs> Allen will down a knee, and Tennessee watches as Vanderbilt will bring it out to the 20 yard line. Well, there's a, just a flock suit, man. The quarterback just throwing it up in the air, and Hefty just taking the gift and going the other way. And there you go. There's Meacham just going up above the receiver. And Jonathan Wade taking another gift down the right side. Of and there's your fourth. Is that the fourth field goal today? Four for four for Wellhorn. So Vanderbilt will put it in play. Tennessee scoring drive, the last one. Four plays, they lost 12 yards, but they still get the points on a 42-yard James Wilhoyt field goal. Mackenzie Adams, the new quarterback. Jared Hawkins, the, also a freshman, is the new tailback for Ben. He moves it ahead for just about a yard. Wes Brown and Alex Wilson, the tackle for Tennessee. Well, Adams was a guy, he was in the battle for the quarterback job with Nixon in spring and in fall ball. Uh, Nixon came out on top, but, but through most of spring practice, they had them listed both equally. So this kid, big kid, can run and got a good arm. Adams on the option, pitches left. This is Hawkins. Hawkins knocked out of bounds, gets the first down. Jonathan Wade knocked him out. But not before he picks up good yardage on a Vanderbilt first down. That's the option play that we saw earlier. And get the ball out there and get him out in space, get a good block on the safety. Next thing you know, you got first down yardage. First down at the Vanderbilt 35. Commodores with McKenzie Adams, quarterback. Straight ahead, going nowhere. Is Hawkins again. Walter Fisher makes the tackle from his defensive tackle spot for the Volunteers. It's a loss of one. You know, you're down 39 to 7. You, you automatically think, well, you got to put the ball in the air. You know, let's just short, you know, let's go get a touchdown quick. It appears that Coach Johnson uh, wants to shorten this game up and get out of here because all he's done is run the football. Second down 11 Adams out of the shotgun now for Vanderbilt gives it to one of the slot receivers that's Gaston Miller number 27 into the game as both teams are emptying the bench. Especially on offense. So he gained a couple. I'm just looking at Tennessee's defense. It appears that their secondary is their normal secondary. And uh, linebacker wise, I can't see. Rico McCoy's in the ball game. Adam Myers White's in the ball game. Got some youngsters up front too, but the secondary is still pretty much the same. Adams on third down and about eight. Tennessee collapsing on him. Gets out of bounds. Short of the first down, Rico McCoy chased him out over there, so it will now be fourth down upcoming for Vandy. Fourth and two, fourth and three, fourth and a long two. Vanderbilt's going to 
at least act like they're going to punt the football. Well, Brent Upson will come on to punt for Van. Rico McCoy did a good job of forcing Adams out just before he got to the yard marker. Hefney will return it. Upson gets it away. High wobbly kick, fair catch signal for by Hefney, who bobbled it and catches it at the 22, 23 yard line, and Tennessee gets it right there. So it will be first down for the Volunteers with 8.50 to go in the ball game. 35 yard punt by Upson with a fair catch by Hefney on the other end. It'll be first and 10 Tennessee. It's at the 22, Coach Philip Fulmer with a comfortable 39 to 7 cushion for his team. Arian Foster is in a tailback. Corey Anderson is the fullback. Crompton back to throw, going deep down the side, way under thrown, way off. And the Tennessee fans want a pass interference. Brett Smith, the intended receiver, that ball was way short. Yeah, that ball was short into the inside. You can't, you just can't throw a flag. Now, he, did he get bumped on the right sideline? Sure. Did it have anything to do with the play? No, because the ball was nowhere near. So basically, it's an incomplete pass. And that's a that's just a poor throw. I mean, that's that's just nowhere in the that's not even in the area coach. Second down and ten. Crofton. Gives it to the tailback. That's Foster. He gets back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe actually lost a yard. It'll be third and long. Brent Tice makes the tackle for Vanderbilt. Foster's trying to trying to find something, but there's three black shirts. The minute he touches the football, he had no place to go. Clock moving, eight minutes exactly. That's the time remaining here in the game. The second bunch needs to gain a few yards. I believe they're minus 12 so far in the two series, as in yards. Vanderbilt's blitzing again. Crompton picks it up again, throws it high over the head of Jeff Cottom, the intended receiver. So now Tennessee faced with a fourth down. And Britton Colquitt will come in just for the second time today to punt the football. Alex Washington will be back deep to receive it. He'll stand at his 35 for Vanderbilt. Colquitt stands inside his 10 to punt it for Tennessee. High snap, gets it away. Taken by Washington to the midfield strike, and Vanderbilt puts it in play first down from that point. Ryan West, the snapper. Made the tackle for Tennessee. So Vanderbilt gets it just inside the 50-yard line at the Commodore, uh, the Tennessee rather, 49-yard line. And we're just playing out the string here. Seven and a half minutes, a little bit more than that to go. Interesting to see if Vanderbilt continues to run the football. He ran it four straight times last series. Well, he's getting, he's wanting to play a lot of young people, and rather than try to win the game, which he can't do, he just wanted to get them some work. I'd like to see this guy throw the football. Tailback, that's Jared Hawkins, straight ahead, picked up about three. Chase Nelson, number three at right defensive end, makes the tackle for Tennessee. Number nine, freshman McKenzie Adams in a quarterback. Looks a lot physically like Jay Cutler. He really does. About the same size. Hands it off straight ahead. Washington, a tailback, gets the first down, crossing the Tennessee 40. He needed about six. He got seven. So it'll be a first down for Vanderbilt. Adam Myers White made the tackle for Tennessee from his linebacker spot. And Gaston, I believe, was that Gaston Miller running the football there? Tony said he's got a burst. He he hit the hole and got to it before Tennessee even saw him. That was Miller. Gas 
Jason Miller still in a tailback. First down, Vanderbilt. Give it to Miller again, straight ahead. Picked up about two, and that's it. Wes Brown, and on the tackle for Tennessee, DeMonte Bolden, who had nine tackles in the last two games for Tennessee against LSU and Arkansas. Tennessee hadn't had a chance to play a lot of young guys this year. They've won a lot of games, but they've been contested enough where you just couldn't shuffle people in and out. This is a good opportunity for these guys to get some experience. Second down, they give it to the tailback. That's Jared Hawkins back in. He takes the football inside the 35 to the Tennessee 33. It will be third down. Walter Fisher made the tackle, and Vanderbilt is still less than 200 yards in offense, about 195, 96 yards. Well, Vanderbilt's moving the ball pretty good on the ground here. Uh, converting third downs, they've got a third and four here. You know this is two down territory for them. Third down, a little more than five. They hit Adams. He gets the pitch. Going wide is Jared Hawkins. And he gets the first down for Vanderbilt. Jonathan Hefney shoved him out of bounds. Boy, that option is hard for Tennessee to contain. It, well, it really is. Uh, if you get a good block by your wide receiver on the outside, which they did, uh, there's just nobody out there to make the play. The football rests inside the Tennessee 25. It'll be first down for Vanderbilt, under five minutes to go in the game. McKenzie Adams out of the shotgun this time for Vandy. High, soft snap, keeps it himself up the middle to the 20, inside the 20 to the 18. Rico McCoy in on the tackle for the Volunteers. You're going to see Tennessee bring some blitz here soon. They're, they're not going to just sit back and watch Vanderbilt shove it down their throat in the end zone. They're going to, Vanderbilt, all they're going to do is run the football, but they're going to start bringing some run blitzes to combat it. 422, clock moving. It's second down at about five. Richard Kovlicek and a quarterback for Vanderbilt. Makes it, keeps it, might have been a busted play. Tennessee stops him at the line of scrimmage, no gain. Rico McCoy makes the tackle. So Vanderbilt now faced with a third down. Kovacek's a, a transfer from Arizona. He believed he had already graduated out there. He took advantage of that new rule where if you've already graduated, you can move to another school and not have to sit out and have immediate eligibility. He came in as a uh, kind of a safety blanket in case these other two quarterbacks didn't work out for Vanderbilt. Kovalchak back to throw over the middle, caught by the big tight end, flag on the play. Jake Brantford, a freshman, makes the grab. But there is a marker, and it's dropped right at the line of scrimmage. We'll see what it is. Out of Vanderbilt's two deep depth chart just on their offensive line. They have three sophomores and four freshmen. We talked about it earlier. They've got a lot of young guys playing. Uh, Earl Bennett, the sophomore, quarterbacks a sophomore, the second quarterback. Is a red shirt freshman. Uh, Hawkins is a sophomore. Illegal formation. On the six men on the line, on the offense, five yards from the previous spot, replay third down. Well, that play was totally disjointed from the start. They only had six on the offensive line and then looked like a busted play to begin with. Bobby Johnson complained about it. From the Tennessee 25 yard line. You know, I always said, I knew Bobby Johnson. Years ago, when he was coaching at Furman, he looks just like Steve Martin, the comedian. And he he goes to banquets and will speak and put the arrow thing on his head, you know, the, <laughs> because people invariably will ask him about it. Wild and crazy guy. Tennessee with a blitz. Bam! Locked it loose. Penalty marker down. 
Tennessee's going to pick it up. Who's running with that ball? It's number 95, Walter Fisher. But it may be coming back. Fumble on the play. I don't know what he could call here other than hitting the quarterback high, possibly. Face mask, I think, may be the call. We'll see. What was it? Uh, hit, uh, hitting in the head, I think. Ah, uh, well, that's a bad call. That's just, he hit him in the shoulder pads. I mean, it, at this point in the game, you, you know, you can't really say much, but you know, you're up 39 7, but that's a pretty clean play from, from first look. Just a really aggressive physical play. Well, let's hear what his explanation. Personal foul. Contact to the head on the defense. Well, we're going to see Rico McCoy coming off the corner, and he's going to catch the quarterback from the blind side. He doesn't even uh, Kovacek doesn't even know he's there. Oh my. That's, that's bad. That's bad. I mean, he just raked his hand down over his helmet going to his shoulder pads. That's a pretty weak call. Nevertheless, it gives Vanderbilt the football. First down at 10 inside the 15 and dropped. Back at the 15 was Rico McCoy. Rico McCoy dropped Jared Hawkins for a loss of two on the play. Yeah. I don't know if that's a blitz or not or whether Rico just read the play, but he shot through the gap. Got Hawkins just immediately after he got the football in the backfield. Second down and 12 with just over two minutes to go in the game. They give it to Hawkins again and again. Rico McCoy who is really playing a Outstanding game for Vanna for Tennessee. I know it's in a mop up role, but the freshman has a lot of talent. Yeah, he read that one too, came right off the corner, and he's got a lot of speed. He catches Hawkins again before he has a chance to go anywhere. So now it's third down and about 14. Less than a minute and a half to go. Tennessee has locked up win number eight on the year. 39 to 7. Tennessee's blitzing. Coming after Kovalchek, who drops the pass away. It's complete to Adams Washington, and he is knocked out of bounds inside the five. I think he's shy of the first down. We'll see. It's a pickup of 12 yards. Dan Williams got to it. Big Dan Williams, he's playing tackle. What's he doing play over there on the sideline? Hustling. I'll tell you what, Hustling. that was a hustle play. Here we go. Second on the road. Timeout. <laughs> Timeout. Called by Vanderbilt. That's the Commodore's final timeout of the game with 108 to go in the contest. And Vanderbilt will be faced when they put it back in play with fourth down and about two. Well, celebrate Thanksgiving Day with a different brand of football. Catch the Super Bowl with the Canadian Football League, the Grey Cup, Thursday at 6, right here on CSS. Well, there's somebody on the Tennessee sideline knows a lot about the Canadian Football League. Andrew Tolloway played and, and is in the CFL Hall of Fame. Yeah, he was MVP up there a number of times. Played 12 seasons, I believe, 12 or 13 seasons up there. Had a great career. He's one of those guys that if, 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 if today he's been in the NFL because he was a great quarterback when he came out of high school. They said, hey, you can come play defensive back. Uh, he said, no, I'm going to play defensive back for the quarterback. He was forced to go to Canada had a great career there. Today, he became a quarterback.
kick and field goal. Vanderbilt on a fourth down and about one and a half is going to attempt a field goal. Why? 22 yard. Why? Is this uh, is this their normal kicker? No, it's uh, their number two kicker. It's the punter, Brent Upson. Okay, they're going to give him a chance for a, his lone kick of the season. Right. And he made. So Vanderbilt gets its tenth point of the game. That was Patrick Johnson, number 38, not Upson. Upson is listed as the number two kicker, but they moved Johnson ahead of him. Well, I hope the Tennessee fans enjoyed that boat whistle because there's no Vanderbilt fans left here to hear it. No, there, well, there's the band guys over there, but that's about it. 39 to 10, Tennessee with a lead with just over a minute to go. And that's only because they got to stay here until the game's over. <laughs> Well, it's been a beautiful day for football and a good day for the volunteer team. Well, Philip Fulmer wanted a convincing win. He, he felt like his team needed it after the last two weeks. The, the heartbreaking loss to LSU and then the dismantling by Arkansas. He felt like his team needed to come out and get after and throttle somebody. He got his wish today. Tennessee will improve to eight and three with one game left. That will be at home next week against the Kentucky Wildcats and they'll start it at 1230 again just like this one. There's a young Tennessee fan and his dad. Kentucky was on their way to their was it their seventh they had six uh, wins going in today. Yeah six they were, had, were on their way to their seventh win earlier in the day. So you know they're going to come in juiced up. Vanderbilt will kick off to Tennessee with 103 to go in the ball game. And there's a kick. High short kick taken by Tennessee at Marcellus Johnson. And he is snowed under inside the 20. So a, not a deep kick, but an effective one for Vanderbilt. With 53 seconds to go, I would imagine we'll just see Tennessee maybe run one play and take a knee. Clock is moving now with 51 seconds to go. And the Tennessee fans have their swagger back. Jim Bob Cooter in a quarterback. Tennessee's in the victory formation. Best name in football. The knee goes down. 29 seconds. That'll do it. I always hated that play. I mean, I like that play because it means you won, but I hated doing it because it, it just kills the rushing out. You know? <laughs> Especially for a quarterback. Yeah, you don't get many chances, so. Well, Coach Fulmer and Coach Johnson exchange congratulatory handshakes at midfield, and that is it. Tennessee now 8 and 3 going into the regular season finale against Kentucky next week at Neyland Stadium. Final score Tennessee 39, Vanderbilt 10. The Vanderbilt Commodore season ends at 4 and 8. You stay with us. We'll be back to wrap it up for you here from Vanderbilt Stadium in Nashville right after this.